What is up creators, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve tutorial for beginners. Today we're going to cover the four different tools that DaVinci offers us to control the exposure and contrast on our image. So let's jump into it. So creators, once in DaVinci Resolve, I've already added a clip into my timeline and I've moved into the color module. In this module is where we're going to create all our color grading. Now, to, now for this tutorial, we're going to cover four tools. First of all, the primary color wheels, then the color bars, lock color wheels, and finally the HDR color wheels. So it all depends on which one we want to use, but all of them can be used to alter the exposure and contrast in a similar manner. Now for this tutorial, we're going to skip the tone curve. Now the tone curve can be used to control the exposure and contrast in a similar manner, but I already made a tutorial about it. Just link up here in case you want to check it out. I did it for photo but it's in essence the similar process and similar results for video. So let's jump into it, starting off with the first one, which is created for beginners and to be time efficient, which is the primary color wheels. So when you boot up the color module for the first time, the primary color wheels are going to be set by default on your left hand bottom corner. And as you can see, they're composed by these four settings or these four tools. We have offset, which is just another name for the exposure. Then we have gain, which is for highlights, gamma for midtones and lift for shadows. Then we have the color wheels where we can add a color into a specific part of the image. Let's say that we want to add a teal color into dark parts of the image. We can basically just move the center point towards the teals. And as you can see, the dark parts will be adding this uh, blue tint that we're selecting. Then we have our RGB metrics over here. As you know, every single pixel on our digital images are composed by the RGB, the combination of these three colors, the red, green, and blue, create bright exposure. So as you can see, if I move the lift up, the values of the RGB move in a uniform manner as well. So you have to keep that in mind. And finally, we have our wheel or our dial at the bottom that will control the intensity and how much we're pushing each of these values. Now offset is just another name for exposure. As you can see, if we move the dial up, everything becomes more bright in a uniform manner. Move it down, everything becomes darker as it's represented in the waveform. Everything moves in a uniform manner without being deformed or altered. Then gain controls the bright parts of the image initially, but then it starts to deform the rest of the exposure. So if we move gain enough up, as you can see, it starts by moving the highlights then if we push it a bit too more, it starts moving also the exposure in the shadows and in the midtones. And notice how our waveform is expanding and being deformed. The same thing occurs with lift. You can move it just a bit to affect the dark parts of the image, but push it way too hard and you start affecting the other parts of the image, the midtones and also the highlights. So as you can see, the parameters between lift, gamma and gain overlap each other. This making this tool not the most precise, but it also makes it the fastest way to edit. So right here, let's say that we want to correct this log footage manually. We can always just pull the shadows and the lift down until we have some nice blacks. And then I'm gonna pull the highlights up to have some nice contrast. And finally, just gonna add some saturation. And there we have it, just like that. We've kind of corrected our log footage. We can always just put the darks just a bit down. And there we have it, just a few clicks, and we have a very nice looking image. That's the benefit of this tool. It's not so rigid like the other ones that we're gonna look at, but it allows us to edit in a very fast manner. Now, this tool is designed for quickness, for time saving, but also for beginners. Now, if we reset our module over here, you can see that we have this crosshair at lift and another one at gain. Basically, we can let the program decide for us what is black and what is white and expose our image automatically. So we can select the crosshair for lift and select something that we know that is black on our image. Let's say the shadow on my uh, telephoto lens over here, gonna click. And as you can see, it automatically alters the values of lift. And then I'm gonna do the same for gain and select this lamp over here and then just add some saturation. And automatically we have a very nice edit very quickly. Of course, then we can go ahead and personalize our edit maybe pull the gain just a bit down and there we have it. So this tool is very efficient and very fast. Now let's move into the color bars. Now the color bars is another way you can correct the exposure and contrast on your image. And as you can see, they're down the same menu of the primaries, but at the right of the color wheels over here. And as you can see, it has the same titles. We have lift, gamma, gain and offset for the settings. And in essence, it performs exactly the same manner as the primary color wheels. Now, instead of the circles, uh, that where we can add a color into a specific part of the image, we have the RGB color bars. So why would you use the RGB color bars? 
Now I like to use them to correct the white balance on my image. So let's say for the purpose of this tutorial, we have an image that I messed up the Kelvin when I was shooting and it's way too warm. How I would correct this would be using the color bars. So immediately we can notice that our image is very yellow, it's very warm. So what I would do, maybe to a specific part of the image, but in this case to the offset, I'm gonna reduce the amount of red that we have by drawing the color, the color bar of red a bit down, something around these lines, and then now we have a lot of green, so I'm gonna compensate by reducing the green. And just like that, I balanced out the white balance on my image. Now, this isn't the most precise method, but this is just the purpose of the example, how I would use the color bars. Now next, let's move into something a bit more specific to exposure and contrast, which is the log color wheels. Now the log color wheels, you can find them to the right of the color bars over here. And let me just reset everything. At a first glance, the log wheels look very similar to the primary color wheels. But notice how the name of the settings has changed. We have shadows instead of lift, midtones instead of gamma, and gain is gone, now we have highlights. So the name isn't the only thing that changes, also their behavior. As you can see, if I move the shadows up in the waveform, we can alter dark parts of our image. If I push it all the way to the plus 100 to 100%, notice how there's a ceiling. It will not cross into the midtones and not into the highlights. The same thing occurs with the highlights and the midtones. If I move the highlights down, you can notice that it reaches a stepping point where it cannot go further. That's a different towards the gain, lift, and gamma. As you can see, if I go back into the primary color wheels and push the gain down, we can basically flatten out our entire exposure with the same tool. So the lock color wheels are a lot more rigid and a bit more precise, but it requires a bit more practice to nail down and master this tool. Say that we pull down the shadows to achieve nice contrast, maybe pull down the exposure, and then the bright parts of the image, I'm gonna pull them up in saturation, but still, it lacks a bit of contrast. So I'm gonna pull the offset a bit down as well and pull up the shadows, something around those lines. As you can see, it takes a bit more work to nail down this process. And I myself have had a lot of time to practice, but if you're just turning out, it is a bit more difficult than using the primary color wheels. Now let's move into something that is even more specific and precise, which is the HDR color wheels. So as you can see right here, we're in the primaries. We're gonna to go to the right over here and we have our high dynamic range color wheels. And it looks very similar, but pay attention that we have now the global, shadow, dark, and black. And if we click this menu, we have also highlights, light, and specular. We have six different channels uh, our image is being torn apart or being divided into six different zones that we can alter specifically or individually. Now to visualize correctly this tool, we can open up the zone menu over here by clicking this icon. And here we have our exposure at the background and notice how we have all our zones marked and with a little arrow indicating which way they're pointing. Now you can always add more zones over here, but by default, you have these six. Now this tool was specifically designed to edit your raw video if you have a black magic or your red camera. This tool will handle larger file exposures, but if you have a log image or a simple video that you want to edit more precisely, it also works. Now the beauty about using zones is that you can move them around to be a bit more specific and alter the specific bug that you want. So right now I'm selecting shadow and I can move it up and down on our exposure depending on what we want to edit. Now notice there's a red line over here, which is just our fall off and you can basically alter it by moving the slider up and down and it will determine how much of the image towards that side is gonna be affected. You can also alter the mid max range over here just to move it around or you can use the sliders which are around your wheel over here to move off the Fairlof and the uh, position in your exposure. So let's say that we want to add a color into these bright parts of the image, these lamps at the background. And as you can see in our histogram, it's highlighted by this point over here. As you can see, the specular is way off. We can always just drag it down. So we only affect that part of the image. Reduce the fall off. So we can only affect that part. And let's say that we want to add a color. So we can add a color. And as you can see right now, because we're being very precise, we, we're only adding the color into the lamps at the background. We're not making it spill or bleed, bleed out into the rest of the image. So it's a very precise tool that you can really use to add some colors into specific exposures and you can also alter the exposure in a very specific manner by zone. So this is the most 
precise and more specific tool within the contrast and exposure range that we have in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're not sure which part of the image is being affected by which zone or which one to alter, you can always select this little uh, moon or sun over here that you have and DaVinci Resolve will highlight which parts of the image are being affected by color. So if we move up just a bit and select maybe the light, as you can see, everything that is with color is being affected by this slider. So you can compensate and edit in a specific manner. So there you have it guys, four different tools to edit your contrast and exposure within DaVinci Resolve. It's awesome that it gives us so many tools or so many options and which one you pick, it all depends to your personal preference. I myself, for my tutorials, when I want to get things done quickly, I use the primary color wheels. When I want to be a bit more specific and detailed, I use the HDR. So if this was a bit too much for you guys, remember that I already made a tutorial for beginners, my process to achieving a very nice color grade, link up here. And if you want to check out my video editing playlist, link up here. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.